This is 3.3 stratified epithelial tissue notes. The essential question is, what are the characteristics, functions, and locations of each type of epithelium? Recall that all stratified epithelium have multiple layers, and let's review some portions of the epithelium. Recall that the top portion of the epithelium that is not attached to anything is called the apical surface. The portion that is attached to the usually the connective tissue, this is called the basement membrane, or sometimes they're call, it's called the ba basal layer. And most of the time that you will not be able to see the actual outline of the cell, but you will definitely see the dark circular or oval shaped or flat structures, those will be your nuclei. Okay, the, so first epithelium we're going to talk about is the stratified squamous epithelium. Remember that squamous means flat, so the top layers will be flat, the cells will be flat, and the nuclei are going to be flat also. Toward the basement membrane, the cells are going to be somewhat taller and they might actually have a cuboidal appearance. So you want to always look at the, the apical surface in order to determine that they are a squamous. And also notice that there are multiple layers of cell. This is why this is called stratified squamous. Functions of the stratified squamous epithelium is for protection against any kind of scratches, abrasions, and the basal layer, which is the basement membrane, the cells are always continually making new cells and replacing the ones that are lost at the apical surface. There are two types of stratified squamous epithelium. One is called non-keratinized stratified squamous, and you're going to find these type of epithelium in areas where there's moisture, like the mouth, the lining of the vagina, and the anus. The other type of stratified squamous epithelium is the keratinized stratified squamous, and the location of that is the skin. The keratin found on skin, it pre creates a, an extra protection for the skin, uh, protection against a water loss, protection of, against any kind of physical damage like scratches or where there are areas there's a lot of friction, and also keeps out any kind of germs like bacteria. This is stratified squamous epithelium, and note the apical surface that is not attached to anything. The bottom portion that is attached to the connective tissue that's underneath, that's called the basement membrane. Note the multiple layers of cells, and notice toward the apical surface, the cells are flat. The nuclei are felt flat, so that this is why it's called the stratified, stratified squamous epithelium. The cells toward the basal membrane, the basement membrane, cells are cuboidal in shape, and the nuclei are round, and this is where the cells are continuously growing. So cells toward the basement membrane are newer, and then as the cells move up toward the top, they become flatter, older, and they become dead and they start becoming sloughed off. Next is stratified cuboidal epithelium. Again, there are multiple layers to the cells. Notice that there are two rows of cells. That's why it's called stratified. The cells are cube shape in appearance and the nuclei are round. Stratified cuboidal epithelium is rare in human body, and their role has various functions, but mainly in the human body is a protective role. The locations of the stratified cuboidal epithelium are in your exocrine glands, such as sweat glands, mammary glands, and salivary glands. This is stratified cuboidal epithelium found in the salivary glands, and again, salivary gland is an exocrine gland. Exocrine glands are a type of glands that secrete materials out of the body. Note the multiple layers 
you see two layers of cells. This is why it's called stratified. And the shape of the cells are cube shaped or square shaped with round nuclei. Therefore, it is stratified cuboidal. The outline in the middle, this is your apical surface. The space inside the uh, apical surface is the lumen. And the basement membrane, which attaches the stratified cuboidal to the connective tissue in the lavender, that's your basement membrane. Next is the stratified columnar epithelium. Again, the columnar cells are tall. Stratified tells you that there are multiple layers. They have oval nuclei, and they're all lined up toward the basement membrane, and they're all in a row. Because they are columnar epithelium, just like the other columnar epithelium, they contain goblet cells. Again, goblet cells produce mucus. Function is for protection and secretion. Secretion means that they are releasing some type of fluid. The location, just like the stratified cuboidal epithelium, it is uncommon in the human body, but you will find these type of cells, the stratified columnar epithelium, in the male urethra and some glands. Here is a picture of stratified columnar epithelium found in the male urethra. Again, only portion that is the, epith the epithelium is the area in the kind of cream color here. Here is your apical surface facing toward the lumen. Here is your basement membrane connected to the connective tissue. Note that there are two layers of cells with a bunch of oval-shaped nuclei. Okay, here's a row of nuclei and another row of nuclei. That's why it makes a stratified columnar epithelium. The last stratified epithelium is the transitional epithelium. And just like its name says, depending on whether the tissue is stretched or non-stretched, the transitional epithelium can change its appearance. Um, in a stretch state, the transition epithelium has a more of a stratified squamous appearance. And when it is in a non-stretched state, then it has more of a stratified columnar, like the picture, or stratified cuboidal. Okay, so notice that the bottom layers look more cuboidal in appearance with the round nuclei. And then toward the top, they look more tall with the oval nuclei. Another feature that is unique about transitional is that it has a scalloped or a dome-shaped appearance to the top, to the apical surface. Function of transitional epithelium is for stretch. The locations of the transitional epithelium would be the urinary system, like the ureter, urinary bladder, and parts of the urethra. Note the picture of the transitional epithelium and the, how the cells look more cuboidal, stratified cuboidal in appearance. But one thing about transitional is that notice that the nuclei are all over the place. In stratified cuboidal and stratified columnar, they're actually in rows of nuclei. Toward the bottom, you have the basement membrane, which connects it to the connective tissue underneath. And an Another unique feature about transition epithelium is the scalloped or the dome shaped to the apical surface. And another unique feature is that transitional is the only one that the nucleus goes all the way to the top toward the apical surface. All the other types of cells have the nuclei more concentrated toward the basement membrane rather than the apical surface. 3.3 notes homework. Number one, how do non-keratinized and keratinized stratified squamous epithelium differ in location and function? Number two, describe the characteristics of tra transitional epithelium and how do they help in their function? Number three, what do all columnar cells have that none of the other epithelia have?